All right, I think we are now live. Good morning. It's Bernard Nomberg with another weekly episode of Nomberg Law Live. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. And I've got my friend, Southern California, Karima Gulick on the other line. Good morning, Karima. Good morning, Bernard. It's nice to be here with you today. Well, thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. I, I really appreciate you getting up early and and coming on board for us to talk for a little bit this morning. And guys, as we do each week on Nomberg Law Live, I try to bring to you different subjects to talk about, and we bring on experts in their respective fields. And for Karima, she is certainly no, no exception. She has many areas of expertise. We will leave aside today salsa dancing and scuba diving, <laughs> and we're gonna hit into intellectual property talks. And we had Mickey Young on a few weeks ago, and he gave us a broad stroke of the, the, the field or the world of intellectual property, but we're gonna kind of narrow our focus a little bit today with Karima. But before we jump into that, if you would, Karima, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, so uh, like you mentioned, Bernard, uh, I am uh, an engineer and an attorney. Uh, which allowed me to go into um, intellectual property, bands, um, uh, for, for the most part. Um, and so, yeah, while I was an engineer, I really fell in love with our Innovation Council and um, getting to know uh, inventors, getting to hear new disclosures and being on the uh, cutting edge of technology. And uh, so I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the novelty. I enjoyed staying sharp week after week. So I decided to um, go into Pound Law. Um, so I, that's my second career. <laughs> well, when you're when you're not being an aeronautical engineer, I think <laughs> your, your side projects, it seems, uh, are really so much more interesting than anything that I do. But it's <laughs> I appreciate you spending a few minutes with us, Karima. Yeah, um, before we jump into this, I want to say good morning to our mutual buddy, Mitch Jackson, watching in Southern California. Good morning, Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Uh, as always, he's got his cup of coffee and tuning in and usually shares this out. So thank you, Mitch, as as always. Karima, let's talk about, we're, we're going to talk today about mistakes that businesses do when, when creating their company or their their businesses. But before we jump into to that refined uh, discussion, I want to just give us a broad stroke of what is intellectual property? What does that mean? Because the average person, or even not the average, most people don't really know what that entails. So if you would just kind of give educate us a little bit on that. Sure, absolutely. Um, so really what it is, is anything that you come up with um, that is either tangible or an invention that you turned into a product or uh, some work of art that you were able to, uh, to either uh, record, whether it be a book, whether it be a video, a song, uh, lyrics of a song, anything like that, um, a brand, a catchphrase that you came up with, uh, it, all of these things fall under the category of intellectual property. Most people are familiar with actual property, real estate property, that's that's your property. Nobody can come in, nobody can use it without your consent, uh, nobody can sell it or, or do anything with it without your consent. So intellectual property is, is the equivalent of that, but for anything that you came up with uh, that is either a creative work, uh, you know, a branding, marketing that is related to your brand or inventions that you might have come up with. Um, and I like to say, well, it's an asset. Uh, it's an asset that could be used to building your business to making money and um, I like to think about it as, I mean, think about Beyonce and how she makes money in her sleep by recording one CD or DVD or whatever it is and then just capitalizing on that. Um, so it's it's work that you do once and that you, that you keep capitalizing on essentially. And could it be examples like um, Coca-Cola's slogan or some, even some uh, family-owned local business that may have come up with a catchphrase that you see on television in their ads. Are those examples of intellectual property? Absolutely, so uh, as long as something is not generic. So for example, if I have a coffee mug here and I can't just uh, trademark coffee, uh, coffee mug because then I would be stopping others from using uh, a word that is commonly used that is very descriptive. So as long as it's not 
descriptive and it doesn't fall under a few other exceptions um, you, and, and you've coined that term, uh, the trademark office will essentially give you rights to use exclusively that brand, that catchphrase, uh, or that slogan, or, or that, that word mark, or even logo or design, um, and stop others from using that. And, and I that, really like the article that you actually pointed me to this morning. I'd love to chat about that. Well, that's I want to bring that in in a few minutes. We'll talk about sure. that. There's so many layers there to, to discuss. But let's let's go on to our main topic for today, because I know this is one that it's a it's an area of the law that you specialize in that you're very good at and very knowledgeable. And I want to, to talk about and I, tell me if this is the right title, the top five intellectual property mistakes that businesses make with their company. Yeah, so uh, the idea came actually from Mitch um, for, for his show. We're going to be talking about the top five patent mistakes that intellectual property owners make. So uh, for this, I decided to look at it a little broader, and I see mistakes being made day after day from businesses and business owners who call me, and it costs them a lot more down the road uh, to, to fix these mistakes, whereas it would have costed them uh, sometimes very little money at the beginning, uh, a small investment that would have gone a long way and avoided very, very costly mistakes at the end. So, well, let's, yeah, let's just dive in, just hit them and let's sure. talk about them. Yeah, so the first one, since we've been talking about trademarks, let's start with the trademarking. Um, one of the first mistakes that I see is businesses uh, not doing a proper search before, like they'll brand themselves, they'll pick a brand, start printing, promotion material, start doing the packaging, everything revolves around that brand, only to find out that somebody else has been using that that mark or that slogan or that that brand itself before them and now they have to either pay money or rebrand or both um, and it, it's it's worse when you have a big inventory and you really need to uh, start discussing timelines to you know just rebrand your entire inventory and it becomes very very costly so this is something that could have easily been avoided by doing a simple search and making sure that no one else is using that mark or variations of that mark uh, in relation to your business um, so so that's that's one mistake that uh, that is that is easily avoidable from the get-go uh, and well, Karima where can people go if they think they sure. have an idea what what should they do to start so they don't head down that path absolutely uh, so and I'll, I'll send you a few links about the the United States Patents and Trademark Office has a trademark database search um, and that's basically where everything is uh, it's a little bit like a brute force, I call it, because it takes quite a bit of work uh, to 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 go through that, to comb through that. But it's it's really that, that's what the examining attorneys and the USPTO use for deciding whether they're going to allow your mark or not. So so that's where one avenue to start with. The other one is really a Google search, like doing a Google search for the mark and for that for the goods and seeing if anything comes up. If something comes up, that means that person has been using it in commerce for longer than you have and see whether they're still using it. They might the, they might not have been using it anymore. They might have decided to abandon their mark and in which case it would be okay for you to start using again. But um, if you see someone still using that mark within what you're planning on doing, step away from that, go pick something else. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. All right, number two, what's the, the second mistake that you see often? Number two, this one is for inventors and it really breaks my heart every time it comes up. Um, so in the United States, we have uh, these bars. So one year after you've started selling or disclosing your invention to other people on the internet, on social media, you are forever barred from getting a patent on that invention. And that is something a lot of people don't know. So they decide, I'm going to start making money first, and then I'll invest in getting a patent on this. Um, and poison, point in case, I, I had a uh, one of my clients not too long ago came up with this beautiful dance shoe <laughs> for salsa dancing. Um, and he started using it and selling it. And it had been, by the time we started talking, uh, he was already selling quite a bit of these. People were loving them. Uh, it was very innovative, very inventive, very comfortable, yet very stylish. Um, and when I asked him when was the first 
sale or offer for sale. He had mentioned that it was over a year ago, before a year from when we started talking. So that's really unfortunate because that's someone who could have just filed uh, like a provisional application or even done something on their own or with the assistance of the inventor's assistance program with the USPTO, something that would have costed him $75 or $70 and saved his rights is now ended up costing him never being able to stop his competitors from using what he came up with. And is the, the reasoning behind that is because if it's been more than a year and unprotected, so to speak, it's been out in the marketplace, out in society, and it's just been unprotected that entire time. Exactly, yeah. So essentially, um, the, the the whole mission of the USPTO and the and, and the actual patent uh, act is to protect people and inventions, and give them certain rights in exchange for them uh, sharing their knowledge with the world. So um, and, and even that protection is limited for patents. You have about 15 years for a design and then 20 years for for functional utility. But after that, it falls into public domain. So for, think about uh, drugs and pharmaceuticals, for example. They spend all this time doing their research uh, in, in labs uh, to come up with something to cure uh, a disease or a condition. Um, and they get to protect that brand. They get to protect that, that actual invention. But after 20 years, it falls in the public domain, so we can start making generics, so everybody can have access to that. That's the term I was looking for, public domain. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm with Karima Gulick. She is in Southern California, and we're talking about mistakes that businesses make when they're starting up their businesses. And Karima is giving us those protections from an intellectual property standpoint of things they should be doing. And I want to welcome Seth and Mike and Ruth and Steve and Edwin, who are all watching us this morning. And Karima, let's let's pivot now to the number three mistake or, or sure. issue that businesses don't do right. Yeah. Um, so since we're still on the patent and invention, another one that I see, um, I'm a huge fan of Tim Ferriss. And after reading the four-hour work week, uh, when it came out, I think it was a about 10 years ago, I decided to go on Alibaba and buy something in bulk and then resell it online. Um, I, I knew that the product that I had in mind had existed for forever, so I knew that it was already in the public domain. Uh, but a lot of people will come up with, will decide to focus on, on new things. So for example, I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the pop sockets that are on the back of the phone, like the ones that you just put on. Um, so, and then buy those in bulk and try to resell them on Amazon or eBay or, or other online platform, only to get hit with a season and desist later, later because somebody has patented that and they're, they've, you know, they, they've, they've protected their intellectual property. So now they're stuck with boxes and boxes of a gadget in their garage that they can't do anything with because they can't sell it anymore uh, on, on those platforms. So one other thing to do, and it goes back to the search, I know we've discussed trademark search, but for patent search, it's very important. Uh, uh, one of the easiest way to, ways to do this is to go on patents.google.com, type in your keywords, type in exactly what this thing does. Uh, type in the like a little sentence, three or four words uh, that would describe what you do and see what comes up. Um, and before you go deciding to buy in bulk, if you don't see anything, maybe look into hiring a professional um, before making that initial investment and go in and buying a, a lot of these products. It, it really sounds like you just need to do some research, some, some um homework, some background work before you try to go public with anything that you're doing. Exactly, absolutely. Uh, and honestly, as long as you do your due diligence, I know some people who get really paralyzed with this. They're mm -hmm. so scared and paranoid that someone else is going to either use their brand or their idea that they don't even move forward. Do, mm -hmm. do a little due diligence. If your budget allows, hire a professional. If it doesn't, do your own search. If you don't think you see anything, go for it, you know, and, um, and, and, and see what happens. Um, once you start making a little bit of money, hire a professional, make sure you're still on the right path. So do, do your research, do your homework, but don't wait too late uh, when your product's out in the public domain. All right, let's keep going. Absolutely. What's another, yeah. what's another mistake that you see? Okay, so this one is people either spending too much on intellectual property protection or too little. And I'll talk about both. The first one 
as a huge fan of Shark Tank, one of the latest episodes, this inventor or um, entrepreneur spent over $750,000 trying to patent his invention in the US and in other countries internationally. I don't even know how he spent that much money. Uh, I mean, it's, it's understandable if you're going in, in, in a lot of different countries. Um, and when they asked him how much sales he had to date, he said none. Um, so that's something that I don't understand. I don't, I don't see these cases very often, but I see people who are so eager to protect their intellectual property here, and they think they have these plans of world domination to protect their IP across the world, and they end up spending way too much before they even make anything. Um, so to avoid that, and if your primary market is going to be in the United States, spend the money to protect your, your brand, spend the money to protect your invention in the United States. Both uh, patents and, trademark, and, and trademarks allow you to, uh, to file here in the U.S. and then use this as a priority to go into other countries. Um, for trademarks, it's six months, and then after that, you're in direct competition with people in other countries. And honestly, it's not... I feel like it's not the end of the world sometimes, as opposed to a patent where you really can't, uh, you you can't get that patent protection anymore. For for trademarks, um, you can always tweak it. You can always add a logo. You can always change things to to make it uh, to make it allowable in other countries or change the the branding for specific markets. Um, as far as patents go, you can file what we call PCT. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it gives you two and a half years to decide which countries you want to go into. And you might spend that money and decide at the end of the two and a half years, you know what, I'm just not going to go in any other countries. My market is here. I'm not going to spread too thin and decide to uh, to, to spend money on, on markets I'm not going to be going into. Um, so, so there's that. And then there's also the spending too little. And that's usually... Uh, or sometimes thinking you're spending too little. A prime example, I had a client last week came to me and uh, it was for, he had already filed the trademark with a company. Uh, they didn't have attorneys or anything like that. And uh, they ended up charging him most for the actual filing fees. They ended up charging him the 400 for paper uh, application, which nobody uses anymore. It's typically 225 or 275. Um, and they they did a, a horrible job. He would have been better off either doing it on his own or going to an attorney who charged him hourly and ended up, you know, paying a lot less uh, than 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 going that route. So sometimes you think you're spending less, but it really ends up being so much more. Same thing with the legal zoo problem and things like that. Just just know what you're doing. If that's the route that you're that you're going to be taking, make sure that. You, you're talking to attorneys. Make sure that you 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 know you, you know what kind of pitfalls and, sure. and mistakes you can fall into. Well, it's, what I'm hearing is these are all sound like very good reasons why you should hire an experienced IP attorney. Uh, absolutely, but you, uh, again, we're not. Sometimes people start and they really don't have the budget. They just have a homemade prototype and they want to decide. They want to see whether this is even worth spending money to protect it. Mm -hmm. um, that one year. Either file a provisional, even if you don't file that provisional, that one year should give you a good uh, like runway or uh, um, time frame to, to test and see whether it's worth for you to go and, and spend the money on, on the protection. Um, gotcha. gotcha. So, okay. All right. So, let's, and, let's pivot on yeah. to number five. What's another yeah, mistake sure. that you see? Um, so, again, this one is basically just um, not – in general, not doing a little bit of research, not doing your due diligence. Um, so make sure to either hire a search firm if it's a trademark or for a patent uh, when you have the money, but just budget accordingly. You know, it's it's a business expense. It's a business uh, decision at the end of the day. So make sure that whatever money you decide to spend on this is um, is in adequate proportion with, with your business plan. And... Um, with everything else that and the way you see your your business growing well they the all all five of these uh that you just have, have expanded on really sound like very sound business practices but i i know that every situation is a little bit different everyone takes their pride and joy and their their own mindset when they're creating their new um million dollar or billion dollar idea but I think in general, these sound very much like sound business practices. Uh, if you're just joining us, I've got Karima Gulick, 
uh, talking with me. We're, we're discussing intellectual property and mistakes that she sees uh, in her practice that businesses do not do correctly when trying to protect their assets, trying to protect their ideas. And I want to welcome Coach Andrews, Ashley, Dad, and others who are watching. If you have questions or comments for Karima, please throw them in the comment section. Karima, I did add your website uh, into the comment section, but how can people get in touch with you if they have questions and maybe want to explore uh, hiring you for this? Yeah, um, so my email and phone number are both on the website, uh, okay. and it's Karima, K-A-R-I-M-A at uh, K-Gulik, G-U-L-I-C-K dot com, 949-429-0212, um, and I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have. Um, well, very good, very good. Let's let's pivot for a minute, and, and I want to talk about some timely news. Uh, you and I uh, discussed very briefly an article that was in the paper, in the paper, listen to me, online today that I saw uh, in the last 24 hours, and I think I even saw that maybe Jim Hacking, our buddy, had, um, had put it out there for discussion, but it's over in South Carolina, and it involves a father and son, both lawyers, but they've got some trademark, patent, and other IP uh, issues going on, and I hope that you've uh, at least scanned the article, that maybe we can just talk about a real-world example uh, of what, what's going on out there. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll go over, uh, the, the situation is uh, this uh, attorney uh, has spent a lot of money marketing and getting the word out there about uh, his his law firm and he, the the name of his law firm, except he named the law firm under and under his his first name and last name, um, and I believe the yeah. So it was basically first name, last name, um, and then lawyers and whatever their practice area is. Um, so as far as trademark laws are concerned, if you're trying, you can't. What you can't trademark is you can't trademark a last name, but if you have a first name and a last name, usually it's fine. Um, and if you're spending more money and gaining more notoriety and, and things like that, and the, then there are additional uh, uh, laws and regulations that come into place. So, for example, if, uh, if you're a famous person, um, or if you're a sitting president, or if you're a famous athlete, uh, then and, and and someone else is trying to trademark your name for certain goods or services, the trademark office won't allow it. You will get a rejection for trying to suggest a false connection. The whole purpose of trademarks is to, to basically avoid consumer confusion and trying to protect the consumers in the marketplace. Um, so in this case, a father had spent a lot of money trying to uh, basically uh, market his law firm and market his name, get his name out there in that region. And uh, the son decided to go out on his own and start a firm with the same last name. And a judge temporarily basically said, wait, you can't use that. You can't advertise that name right now. You need to differentiate your name a little bit more. Um, ultimately, I think they can't really stop him from using his name to market his law firm. Um, they might, again, the solution might be trying to add certain things to differentiate himself from the father, from the law, from, from the firm of the father. Um, and because the father had spent so much money trying to uh, to market and differentiate himself, uh, he's given certain protections. And and the whole idea is you spent this much on on, on your marketing, now your brand is becoming um, more. Uh, recognizable and you can protect it and you can stop others from using it yeah. um, so yeah and, and it's there's a little bit more to it because it's, sure. it's a family feud uh, but yeah. uh, but in general that's 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 how it works so yeah I put, a, to... I put a link to, I put a link to the <laughs> um, article on it. Okay. it looks like the son uh, is now being barred at least temporarily mm -hmm. uh, from using his own name uh, his father being I guess senior he's junior the, clearly, there's a lot more to it than, than what the article is reporting, but it just looks like a company, a, a law firm, that has spent millions of dollars in marketing over the years in, in multiple states. He's trying to protect his asset, and even if it's at the expense of his son's uh, attempts, uh, that, that's what it appears. But it certainly, it, it, this has IP issues all over it. Um, it 
Exactly, and it looks like they're going to to arbitration. But that's that's basically the main point. <laughs> if even if something is not uh, that not that distinctive, uh, if you're spending that much money to create that, like think about the the. Omaha Steaks, for example, uh, they had spent so much money in the marketing, and that was uh, something that they brought into evidence to show that people are associating their brands to them, even though it's just that geographical location and what they do. So it's it's not that descriptive. So so there is always that how much money is going into your marketing, how much people are connecting that brand to you and what you do. Um, so so uh, and I remember. Um, I was looking one of the cases for the suggestions, the false connection, uh, when uh, uh, Obama was president, uh, President Obama uh, uh, was in office, a lot of people tried to trademark uh, Bahama Obama, Obama Bahama for flip flops or like different things and all of them got rejected for um, trying, so we're trying to protect a, a public figure, but we're, and we're trying to make sure that people are not drawing a false connection between those goods and thinking that those goods are coming from that person, which is basically what the case is here. So um, we, we we see it, or at least I see it all the time uh, in when you go to a college football games in the South. There are the officially licensed products. But then you walk a little bit further away from the stadium and you see the unofficially licensed products where people are just trying to capitalize on those those names. Absolutely. Uh, Kareem, I want to also welcome our buddy Don McClure out of Houston who's watching. Good morning, Don. Hi, Don. A longtime friend of mine, Misty and Dothan, is watching. So thank you, guys. I've been talking with Kareem Agulik. We're talking about intellectual property and how businesses should do things a little bit differently to protect their assets, their ideas uh, as they get started. And Kareem, as we get, we're, we're almost at the end of our discussion and thank you again for your, your time this morning. I really appreciate your expertise and sharing. I guess in, in summary, I, it does sound like people who may have these wonderful ideas, but it sounds like they need to do a little research before they get deeper into their projects. Is that a fair a fair assessment um, so they don't get themselves in trouble or cost themselves a lot of money? Absolutely, yes. And you want to make sure that you're not spending all this money only to have to redo everything. It, it takes a lot of work to bring something from an idea to an actual product. It takes a lot of work to build a business uh, from, from scratch. So uh, make sure you're sitting down, you have a little business plan, you've thought these things uh, through and, and like I said earlier, if you don't have the money to hire professionals, start on your own. Do your own search. Uh, start doing your own uh, research for for branding for for patents before you spend money um, trying to build a brand and an entire company around around an invention. Karima, as, as thank you. Sure. Was... One last thing, and this sure. is something that um, I've seen a lot of my friends do as well, uh, is they'll try to promote their business. So they'll go on Google, Google Images, copy the image, and then repost it somewhere. Please don't do that. <laughs> That's a very easy way for you to get like a cease and desist from a copyright owner. Here is what you can do. There are many websites out there that offer royalty-free uh, images, and they'll allow you to use them without license, without having to pay a single dime for them. One of the prime example is Unsplash. Um, go in there and you, if you want to give them credit, great. I like to give them credit. These are amazing artists who are giving away their work for free in exchange for a little bit of recognition. So do that instead of going and copying something from, from Google because I've seen it time and time again where people are just getting out of nowhere. Um, well, I used this image on my website and next thing I know, they're asking me for this much money. So that's one easily avoidable mistake. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you, Karima, for that and for, for all of your other expertise. And guys, this will end our discussion for today on Nomberg Law Live as we do. We try to come to you every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Pacific. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Karima, maybe I'll see you later today in our Legal Minds session. I hope so. Absolutely. <laughs> guys, be well and take care. Bye. Bye-bye.